Okay, so in this video we're going to look at problem B1 from the 2016 Putnam exam. And so let's look at the problem. We, we want to define this sequence of numbers as follows. So x0 is equal to 1, and then we have this recursion. xn plus 1 is the natural log of e to the xn minus xn. And we want to show that the sum of the sequence, the series, xn, converges and find its sum. So our first goal is to show xn as a sequence converges to zero. And we'll do that by the monotone sequence theorem. So uh, let's just recall for the monotone sequence theorem, we'll need to show first that it's bounded below, and in this case we'll use uh, by zero, and then we also need to show that it's uh, decreasing. Great, so those are the two things that we need in order to show that this goes to x, sorry, that xn goes to zero via the monotone sequence theorem. So uh, what we can do is show that um, all of the xn are bigger than zero by induction. So what we'll first notice is that um, x0 is bigger than, uh, is equal to one, which is bigger than zero. So that's our base case for our, indu our induction. So now let's suppose that xk is bigger than zero um, for some k. And now the next thing we'll do is let's look at x to the k plus, sorry, x sub k plus one. So notice that's the natural log of e to the xk minus xk, but then uh, that's going to rely on the value of this. So in order to get an idea for the value of this, let's look at the following function. So let's look at f of x equals e to the x minus x, and notice that f of 0 is equal to uh, 1, and then also um, f prime of x is equal to e to the x minus 1, great, which is bigger than 0 if x is uh, bigger than 0. Sorry, bigger than or equal to 0. So that means this is an increasing function. So uh, what that tells us is that e to the xk minus xk is going to be bigger than 1. Okay, so let's see why that's true. So we've made our induction hypothesis that xk is bigger than 0. Then furthermore, we know this function is an increasing function. Its value at 0 is 1, uh, which means its value on numbers that are bigger than 0 has to be bigger than 1 because we've increased past that value of 1. So now that the fact that the value of this is bigger than 1 tells us that when we plug this into the natural log, that tells you that the value of this is bigger than 0. Okay, so now what we've shown here is that x to the n is bigger than 0 for all values of n. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to do is show that this thing is decreasing, and we'll do that by exponentiating this recursion. So notice if we exponentiate that recursion, we get e to the xn plus 1 equals e to the xn minus xn. In other words, we can solve for xn, and we'll get xn is equal to um, e to the xn minus e to the xn plus 1. But notice, from uh, this part of the solution, we know that this is bigger than 0, which tells us that e to the xn is bigger than e to the xn plus 1, but now we can take the natural log of both sides, but we know the natural log is an increasing function so that it'll maintain that ordering, and that'll tell us that xn is bigger than xn plus 1, so that means we have this as decreasing.
So uh, now notice we have this is bounded below and it's decreasing. Now we know it has a limit. We don't know that that limit is equal to zero, but we'll calculate that limit um, after I clean up this board. Okay, so let's see where we are in this problem. So our goal, our first goal, I should say, is to show that xn uh, approaches zero as n goes to infinity. So, so far we've proven that this sequence xn has a limit. We'll call it L, and that limit is not infinity. That's because it was a decreasing sequence that was bounded below um, by zero. So the fact that it's decreasing automatically means that its limit cannot be positive infinity. And then next we had this following recursion. So we could write xn as e to the x sub n minus e to the x sub n plus one. And so we'll actually use that in order to calculate this limit. So let's say we have uh, L equals this limit as n goes to infinity of x sub n but that's the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the x sub n minus e to the x sub n plus 1. But now since the exponential function is continuous, we can bring the limit inside. And notice that here we get this is e to the l minus e to the l, which is 0. So notice we have l equals 0, which means we have confirmed uh, the following limit. Now uh, we can go ahead and calculate this sum. So we'll do it by um, taking a limit of partial sums. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum. So we use a capital N here of n equals 0 to capital N of x sub n. Okay, so let's apply this recursion over here first. So that's going to give me the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum, little n goes from 0 to capital N of e to the x sub n minus e to the x sub n plus 1. Okay, so next I'm going to pull out the first term and the last term from this sum. So let's see what we get when, when we do that. That's going to give us the limit as n approaches infinity of, so the first term will be e to the x sub 0 minus e to the x sub 1. Good. And now that's going to leave us with the sum n equals 1 to n minus 1 because remember we're going to pull out the last term as well. And now I'll go ahead and split these two sums up um, in the process. So we have e to the x sub n minus the sum n equals uh, 1 to n minus 1 of e to the x sub n plus 1. And then finally we have that last term that we've pulled off which is e to the x capital N minus E to the X capital N plus one. Okay, so that's what we have there. And so uh, the next thing that we'll do is uh, we can re-index this guy. So uh, we'll just do that in the margin real quick. So we can re-index that guy as follows. So let's uh, send uh, N to N minus one. And so that's going to change this sum to the following. So that'll be the sum from n equals 2 to capital N of e to the x little n. Okay, great. And now from there, we're going to put um, one of these terms into one of the sums and one of the extra terms into the other sum. So let's see, we'll take this term and put it inside of this sum and notice uh, that's going to change this to start at 1 instead of 2. And then next, we're going to take this term and put it inside this sum, and that's going to allow that thing to end at n instead of n minus 1. So now let's see what we have now. What we're left with is the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the x0, but we know x0 is 1, so that's just e. And now we have plus the sum n equals 1 to capital N of e to the xn minus the sum n equals 1 to capital N of e to the xn. And then finally, this leftover term, which is e to the x sub n plus 1. Good. 
But now uh, we're set up and we can just cancel these two sums because they're the same. But now we can take this limit. This is obviously a constant. And then since we know our sequence tends to zero, that's going to tend towards e to the zero, which is one. And so that makes our final answer e minus one. Okay, we're done.